Hello students, how are you? I hope all of you are fine. Let us try to recall whatever we learnt in the last few classes. We have been discussing about friction. We have seen that friction is the force that opposes motion. Friction tries to hold back the objects which are moving. Also, we have seen various factors that affect friction. Students, there are some more interesting things to discuss. Are you all ready? Our friend Rahul purchased a new set of shoes few months back. He was very happy to get these shoes at that time. After using it continuously for few months, its sole has become worn out. See, friends, can you tell what is the reason for this? Why did it happen so? Yes, it is because of the continuous usage. What does it mean? What happens when we are using the shoes continuously? Suppose he was using it always on rough and uneven places, what would have happened? If he used it on rough surface, we know that it would have happened so early. Had he used these shoes on not so rough surfaces, what would have happened? We know that from our daily experience, then the shoes would have lasted for longer time. So, the sole of the shoes get easily worn out because of the friction between the sole of the shoe and the surface on which you are walking. So, friction causes wear and tear of objects. Hence, it causes some trouble in our daily life. So, this is a situation in which friction is not desirable. There are many such situations. Did you see a mixer grinder working? If you switch on a mixer grinder for few minutes and then if you touch the jar of the mixer grinder, what do you feel? It is hot. Did you experience this? Yes, you might have. Where is this heat coming from? What is the cause for this? Yes, friction is the villain here also. As the machines work, there will be many parts that are moving over the stationary parts. The friction between these parts creates heating. Do you know what is heat? Yes, it is a form of energy. Where is this energy coming from? It is coming from the energy supplied to move the moving part of the machine. What does it mean? It means that some of the energy given for moving the objects is converted into heat and it is lost. Since we are losing the energy, in this situation also friction is an undesirable thing. So, the friction causes wastage of energy also. Can you give some more similar examples? Okay, let us see. First one, heating of the blade of the cutting machine used to cut tiles. Second thing, coconut oil extraction machine gets heated up after working for few hours and we generally stop it for few minutes in order to cool it down. Third thing, the blades used in sawmills become so hot after using for few minutes. These are some of the examples in which friction is creating trouble. In all these examples, friction is undesirable. There are many more situations like this. Can you try to add some more examples to this list? Okay, you can try. Students, all these examples which we have seen are the examples in which friction is not a desirable thing. Friction causes trouble to us. 
friction causes wear and tear, damage of the substances, heating of the substances, wastage of energy. So, some of you may be thinking that if there is no friction, it would be so nice. We can avoid wear and tear of objects, we can avoid damage of the substance, there will be no loss of energy. It will be very nice like this some of you might be thinking, is it true? Yes, if there is no friction we can avoid damage of the substances, we can avoid the wastage of energy, but is everything good? Let us see, suppose that you are in a classroom, your teacher is taking a class to you, what is she doing? Yes, she is discussing the things and she is writing the important points on the board. If there is no friction between the board and the chalk, what would happen? Can you imagine? Yes, the writing becomes impossible then. As we write on the board, it is because of the friction between the chalk and the surface of the board, some of the chalk particles are stuck to the board and we are able to see the letters written on the blackboard. If there is no friction, chalk simply moves on the surface of the board and no chalk particles are transferred to the surface of the board and writing is not possible. So, friction helps us in some situations. Let us consider another case. Take the example of walking. Do you think would there be a frictionless floor? If yes, can people walk over it? First of all, there would not be a frictionless floor. Consider a floor in which friction is less. For example, we can consider a wet floor. We know that people skid and fall easily when they walk on a wet floor. Did you see the caution boards kept after cleaning the floors? Yes, you might have seen this at many places. It is the lack of sufficient friction that makes us unable to walk safely. It is the same reason for the difference in the possibility of skidding when we walk on a marble floor and a concrete floor. I have a question to you. Which is easier, walking on a concrete road or walking on a seashore? Why is it so? Try to find answer for this, ok? So, we have seen two situations in which friction is helping us, friction is needed. There are many more situations in which friction is essential. Do not you think it is the same reason for skidding easily when we drive vehicles on a muddy road? Do not you think that it is the same reason for falling down when we step over a banana peel? Students, even to stop moving objects, we need friction. Consider a vehicle moving on a road. Had there been no friction between the tyres of the vehicle and the road, they could not be started or stop or turn to change the direction of motion of the vehicle. We have seen that for stopping a moving object, we need friction. Then what about holding an object? Does it also need friction? Let us see this. Did you experience the difference of lifting a glass tumbler and an earthen pot? Which is easier? We know that it is easier to lift the earthen pot. Why is it so? you may be thinking that its surface is rough. Yes, that is true. What does it mean? Yeah, the earthen pot, the surface is rough and there is more friction. So, it is easier to hold the objects where the friction is more. 
Suppose you are working in the kitchen, you are cooking something and your hands are oily. Then if you try to lift the glass tumbler with the oily hand, what would happen? Yes, it slips out of your hand so easily. So, we have seen another situation in which friction is helpful. Let us consider another case. Look at the nail on the wall. It is because of friction the wall is holding that nail. When we hammer a nail into the wall, it is a friction between the surface of the nail and the wall which holds the nail tightly in the wall. In the absence of the friction, holding the nail in the wall is not possible. Children, it is quite interesting, right? See, there are so much of interesting scientific facts between everything, even the simplest things. I am sure that some of you have the experience of tying ribbons, right? Does friction play a role in tying ribbons? Yes, it definitely plays an important role in tying knots. It is friction which holds the knot. Did you look at the construction work going on somewhere? What is the connection with the friction in this case? Students, do you know that it is a force of friction acting between the various components of a building like bricks, mortar, iron framing that keeps it standing in its place. So, we have seen many cases where we actually need friction. Now, you can add more examples from your daily life to this list. Why do we rub the palms and when we do like this, why the palms are getting heated on a cold day? Can you tell the reason? Did you see a matchbox? What is there on its either sides? Why is it kept there? Is there any role of friction in this? How does a matchbox work? We know that friction causes harm. So, in this session, we have discussed about friction is causing wear and tear of objects. Friction causes damage of the substances. Friction causes wastage of energy. So, in many situations, friction is an undesirable thing. We say friction is an evil in that situations. But we have seen that friction is so essential, it is because of friction that we are able to walk, that we are able to hold the objects with our hand, that machines are able to work and for everything friction is needed also. So, we cannot live in a world without friction. So, friction is necessary, it is desirable, at the same time it causes some trouble also. So, we say that friction is a necessary evil. Students, I suggest you to read these portions in your science textbook. Okay? So, I have a question to you. Can you imagine a world without friction at all? There is no friction at all, zero friction. So, how the life will be in such a world? So, describe the life in a frictionless world. Make a write up for this. You can show it to your teachers. Okay? So, I stop the discussion here. Thank you all.